Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank all of you. Uh, and I want to ask Mr. Wood my first question. We've talked a lot about individual generation and how we're going to meet the challenges. And one of the things I think that you've talked about is um, the diversity of energy sources, particularly as it relates to manufacturing. So, you know, if we're looking to uh, keep our manufacturing base and part of Build Back Better is bringing more American jobs, manufacturing jobs back into this country. Um, what do you think diversity, I mean, do you, uh, do we need the diverse set of energy resources to do, to power our domestic, uh, industries? Can we do it all on renewables and our capital investments in manufacturing based on the presumption that they get uh, access to affordable and reliable, uh, electricity? Thank you for the question. Uh, the, I think the answer is definitely no. We can't do it only on renewables until we have a solution for the intermittency. Um, I can imagine what Elon Musk was thinking after he decided to move to Texas and lo and behold, he lost electricity for a long period of time. And now he's going to build a hundred megawatt storage facility outside of Houston. I'd like to ask him what he thinks about running a plant that loses electricity and that can't get replaced because there's no replacement power that can connect with, uh, with that part of Texas. So I don't think so. I think what, what I said before, which is a planning first process ought to take place where we understand where the large sources of uh, renewables are, what kind of renewables they are, um, how far we want to transmit them, and where we have re uh, sources of, of non-renewable electricity that we can use, including, of course, um, gas to replace that. Gas is, uh, and I understand the gas and nuclear, but gas is a little bit better for this, renew this uh, renewable intermittency because gas units can change load fairly quickly. And when the wind stops, um, it's, you've got to, if you're not going to shut down a plant, you're going to have to change uh, sources of energy very quickly. Uh, nuclear has a pretty good record in changing uh, in changing load, but not as good as uh, as the uh, as the gas plants. Thank you, thank, thank you. you, thank you again for uh, for uh, being on the panel. Uh, we've heard a lot about the NEPA process being 4.5 years. I mentioned in my opening statement uh, that we can't build back better if we can't build. Uh, Senator Whitehouse just talked about transmission and the loss. You know the the um, um, sparsity or scarcity of transmission in certain areas that could be helpful. So the timelines that we're looking at for full uh, renewable and uh, net zero emissions, you know, 2035, you know, can this, I, I, this is a question for everybody. I know we've talked a lot about this, but, um, you know, in, unless we can get these things permitted in a much shorter time frame in terms of transmission and pipelines and other things, um, I don't know how we can get to this aspirational goal of zero emissions uh, in the power sector by 2035. So I'm interested to see, um, we'll just start with our guest here, uh, Mr. Roscoe, uh, if you have any comments on that um, from your report. Um, well, from, from previous work, we know that, that um, you know, the, the concerns about about permitting are, are real. You know, you have to deal with multiple agencies it really helps if you have a lead agency that, that, that coordinates. It also helps if you have a, a pre-application period where everyone can, can be brought together, all the stakeholders. Those are the things that work. Um, some of the things that are sort of out of the federal realm are when you get in a lawsuit, there's, that sort of stops everything. And, and I don't know what the federal government can do about that part. Thank you. I'm going to go to Mayor Garcetti on this one because you mentioned it at the end of your remarks. It's interesting, um, you know, we've heard from the industry, we've heard from um, uh, others, but, you know, you're, you're a uh, quite large municipality. I don't know how many times my state you are, <laughs> but a lot. And, uh, and so from, a, from your perspective, uh, the permitting issue, since you mentioned it, how does that impact you in, in, in your very large city? Well, thank you, Senator. Absolutely. We have so many different regulatory uh, authorities uh, between the state and federal government. Streamlining that would be important since we really do have an infrastructure that's through multiple states. And 
you know, weatherizing critical systems, for instance, at strategic locations, both locally and regionally, should be a part of Build Back Better, um, and maybe require them by code, but then streamline the permitting, so that if it's required by code, it can be by right. As we do this major grid redevelopment, that would be a very positive thing that I think all Americans uh, could rally around um, to create that resilience through the diversity that we need and the investments that we need to have. Thank you. Thank you.